Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Disruptive Investing. I think I got something wrong last week. What do you think you got wrong? Well, remember on Tesla Time News, we were talking about uh, Tesla's new steer-by-wire patent. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was something that they filed for a couple of years ago. We talked about how it takes a while for the patent office to release the final application if they approve it. So, you know, Tesla has this patent. And then we talked about the fact that there really are no cars on the road right now that have steer-by-wire because that means that you would have to eliminate the actual mechanical linkage from the steering wheel to the wheels. And so NHTSA and the European regulators require that if you're going to do steer by wire, which they do allow, you have to have a backup system, which is basically the same system you have today. So I said, well, it would be dumb for Tesla to come out with steer by wire if you had to just add more expense to your vehicle. So I said, this won't be happening for years. I said, probably three years. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it because we heard about the news this week from Tesla Scope that um, they heard, and again, this is just rumor, mm. that there could be steer by wire in the new Model 3 refresh. And I first thought like, no, that can't be. But then I went, wait a minute, I'm thinking like a normal CEO. I'm thinking about a like a bean counter who's like, how can we save 10 cents? Don't include something you don't need. Because let's face it, if I were to put steer by wire in your car today, like go out there and tinker with it and put it in, you wouldn't even know. It's not something you'd be proud of because you you don't know how your linkage works, right? So if I replaced it with computers and motors, you'd still feel the same. But so then what's the point though? Like what, so I mean, okay, so right now my car has a mechanical linkage, goes down to a thing and the rack and pinion and the steery steery, and that's how I'm able to make the car turn in different directions. Right, but, but you said a key word there. What? You said you, that's how you would make the car steer. Okay, okay, you're, you're getting into full self-driving. My car can do full self-driving beta, right? It has actuators in it to steer the wheel, which you're does the turny turny right. and the steery steer. You're absolutely right. Let's look at what's actually doing that today. So, because many of you watching might be like, yeah, cars can't do that. Because like, Let, Let's look at Cruise, let's look at Waymo. Mm -hmm. Here's footage you're seeing now. Those cars have no safety driver in the, in the seat in certain places like San Francisco. But what do those cars have to do in order to do that. The, they have actuators to turn the steering wheel and stuff like that. Right, but they have to throw away a quarter of the cabin, right? You, when you get into a Waymo or a cruise, it says, do not sit in the driver's seat. Oh, right, and then everyone's always filming the steering wheel going like, whoa, it's turning. Which is great for now, right, as we're kind of in the infancy, but fast forward a few years and people will be like, why are we still not, I can't put my family of four into this Waymo because one of the seats is gone. Which is how you use a normal car. We make the cars to have four or five seats in them or seven, you know, in order to fit more people. And, and the driver has always been the passenger of the car. And in fact, in a Waymo, and I think in a cruise, you can't even get into the front passenger seat because you're because told you to might stay reach over and grab it. So that's a danger, right? To have you either have to have the actuators be so strong that they're going to like lock what, you out, overpower your hand, break your wrist or something when you're trying to steer it. Um, or this is why you'd go drive by wire. You're going to remove the connection between the steering wheel and the rack and pinion system and the steering linkages and all that. You make it steer by wire. All of a sudden you can say, turn off steering wheel. We don't exactly. need it. We're going to we're going to steer the car using some full self driving system. So therefore, the wheel would a not turn. It, I could also reach over, grab the wheel, turn it, do whatever I want. It won't listen to me. Right. Um, or it, it'll like maybe it'll take it into consideration and be like, why is it hmm, that thing that I thought was nothing? Maybe it's a deer in the middle of the road. I'll, I'll listen to the person or you just have the, the steering wheel like go into the center console or disappear. Exactly. So the problem is what, though? So you have steer by wire in your car, but you still have to have the linkage now. Right. So what the hell is the point? Right. So that's what I'm getting to. So what is the problem right now? Regulators. Right. Regulators don't have the data and I don't blame them. They can't just say, yeah, oh, you patented oh, yeah. something, Tesla. Sure, we'll get rid of linkages. <laughs> hey, you know what you should do? Oh, Bluetooth. Right. <laughs> yeah, see how that works. <laughs> so what regulators need is data. I think what Tesla is going to do is put steer by wire into the cars. It will cost more. I have no idea how much more. Please comment down below if you know this. I, my guess is it's probably in the thousand dollar range because it's more motors and actuators. And you might be like, well, then you're crazy, Zach. Why would they spend a thousand dollars more for something that owners won't even know that they have? It's a sacrifice. They need to be able to show regulators in the next few years the data. And hopefully the data would show, 
hey, we've uh, got a certain number of cars that we've been doing steer by wire with. It's probably going to be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of cars. And maybe the data hopefully is going to be great and show that it's super safe. And then hopefully they'll be able to convince regulators, maybe in some district like San Francisco or Las Vegas to say, oh, OK, your cars can now have steer by wire without the mechanical backup. There still will be redundancies. Their patent shows redundancies that are in the steer-by-wire electrical system, mm. but not mechanical. And I just want to go back to the mechanical for a second. You might be thinking like, I like mechanical. I like a metal rod sticking into my steering column. Uh, that can break. And as we pointed out on the show, uh, according to data that comes out every year from accidents in the U.S., there's about 200,000 car accidents. Uh, and 2% of those, 4,000, have something to do with steering. I'm not saying it's breaking the mechanical linkage, but a lot of accidents have to do with some kind of steering problem. And that is because even with the mechanical linkage, you can have problems. So it might turn out once we see the data that this new system, which has so many redundancies, might turn out to be even better. So the reason that Tesla would put this in their car would be to be able to prove to regulators because otherwise how would regulators know right they would either have to it would either be that like honda or toyota would be like hey here's our steer by wire system here's one car right and they would be like well we'll look at it but like that doesn't well and they'll anything. never do it none of the other car manufacturers will be first to do it why do you think tesla was able to patent this first because the other manufacturers are going to look at this and go what's the advantage to us we can't use this as a selling point with customers in fact it's a negative selling point if i say new thing. hey we've got a new thing and there's um, <laughs> nothing connecting you to the road. You right. might be like, screw that. I don't want it. So I think that Tesla's making a sacrifice. It's going to cost them some money up front. But Elon thinks long term. And what will this do to Tesla if it works? If the data shows that their system does work better and they can get rid of the mechanical linkage, that will allow them to save all that money on the mechanical system. That will allow them to go to robo taxis and it will make it so they'll have the only licensable system out there on the market, which means that when the other car manufacturers say, hey, great, now it's been approved. We want that, too. They're going to have to license it from Tesla or they're going to have to get their own systems approved by NHTSA, which, which is won't probably be... going to cost the same amount of money exactly. that Tesla spent. Right. And right now. Well, and also Tesla just patented it. So true. But I mean, it would be a, some other system. Well, right. They'd have know. to come up with a non patented system. I'm just saying here, I think this is a. Look, I don't know for a fact that it will be in the new refresh Model 3. Um, right. This is based on a rumor. This is based on a rumor. <laughs> um, and so I'm really intrigued now to see if that's true. But it does start to make more sense that we've seen the patent. Tesla does have a team that's been working on steer by wire since 2020. Why would you put money into something that you wouldn't be trying to do? And it does follow Elon's whole game plan here, which is he wants to have robo taxis. If you want robo taxis, you have to get rid of the mechanical linkage. Do you think that they will only install the steer by wire on cars that are bought with full self driving? Interesting. Good question. I mean, that way you kind of you you're offsetting the cost of putting in this we think to be a fairly mm -hmm. expensive system. I don't think they will. I think they want data, so I think they need as many cars as possible. I don't know like what is going to be considered by regulators to be a nice big pool, a million cars, like 10,000 cars. Seems like a million is way more than enough maybe but this is a big deal i mean getting rid of steering right, it, it's all about miles right? true so i mean once you get like a million or 10 million or a billion yeah but you miles, need you need accidents unfortunately to say you need <laughs> you need deaths you need bad things happening i'm sorry to say it um it's terrible it is terrible but you need you can't just have a car that goes along and nothing bad happens to it you need the car to get into all sorts of weird accidents so that you can test out oh how did this work when it avoided a deer how did this work when it didn't work you know and so yeah you need a lot of cars. So hmm. that's why I'm thinking Model 3, and then they'll probably roll it into future cars. Maybe yeah. it's going to be in the Cybertruck for all we know. Could be wrong. Let me know what you think. But this is disruptive, and we are thinking about disruptive investing here. And if, if this is true, this gives Tesla a whole other line of edges in terms of licensing, in terms of robo-taxis that you just can't do unless you do this. And this is how Elon thinks, whereas other CEOs think just like saving pennies. He's thinking long term. He's willing to make sacrifices that pay off down the road. And that's why I think maybe I was initially wrong. Hmm. And that's another piece about disruptive vesting I just want to get across to you guys. You have to constantly question your thinking. You have to constantly go, I might be wrong. If you don't do that, you will be wrong. It's as Elon says, it's all just a, a level of degree of wrong that we are. We're never right. Um, and so if you're not constantly questioning, if you're not doing that, you're just more wrong. Imagine if I was right, like how I'd be like, well, on June 
uh, 29th at 6.45 p.m., Tesla will deliver their first. Like, how could I possibly know anything right. at all? We don't. We're just taking these little puzzle pieces, and that's why our community is so important. Your thoughts and ideas filter into my mind, into Jesse's mind. It, it gives us these thoughts and ideas. I really appreciate you commenting down below what you think because you guys are smart if you're watching this channel, and we really do need our community to figure all this out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Disruptive Investing.